well, I think that we could just start by watching the film. Yeah? Um, yeah. This is a film made in St. Petersburg in something like 98. Um, it, uh, this building is the, um, the uh, central exhibition hall, but as you can see from the horses, it's, it, it, uh, it, 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 its subtitle is the manege. The manege means riding school. It's the actual um, uh, uh, circle of, the ri of, a, of, of, a, of a riding school. And uh, indeed, this was the imperial riding school, but after the revolution, it, um, it, it became a taxi depot. Uh, and I was asked to do, do a performance there, as I say, in 98, uh, just a few years really after Russia had opened up. And I'll show it first and then talk about it afterwards.
I thought I'd, I'd sit and uh, I re sort of really today I w I'm just going to um, riff a little about various various things <coughs> rather than a pre any prepared thing. Art art within within. Ga Can we have some light? I'd love to be able to see people. <laughs> art, art, art within galleries. Art, I mean, art outside galleries. The outside world is outside, and uh, so, and the world, uh, and, and art is within galleries, but that's not really true, is it? I mean, right from the start, the outside world is what we expect to find in the gallery, whether it's Caravaggio finds a street urchin and Suddenly, that street urchin ends up as a beautiful painting inside the Uffizi. Um, so, equally, obviously, sculpture can be outside in Trafalgar Square. So, I think we've all we've always had this this um, uh, this uh, ambiguity of, about the outside world and the and, and and the art world. And actually, there's always an osmosis. There's always been this. Um, uh, um, uh, transition between the two, and, and in a sense, art itself, the, the, the grubbiest street corner can become absolutely a, a ravishing work of beauty simply through its, through its recreation as a piece of art. There's some strange change that, that the outside world goes through when, when, it's, when it's made into art. Um, uh, this has always really interested me in terms of um, uh, I've often worked with very ordinary actions, um, taking off a coat, putting on a coat, um, uh, really perhaps looking at people like Duchamp and the, and the ready-made and the found, found object. Um, uh, and so uh, a large part of the choreography or the, the devising of things like the theatre of mistakes have, have been about simply structuring, structure, structuring um, natural actions, um, functional actions. Um, I've made sculpture using chairs or sculpture using tables. So in a way, it's, it, it's very much about that sort of... Um, re, uh, um, uh, um, world that's already there in reality. Um, I'm a poet. 
I'm, a, I, I'm, I'm also a dancer. And I've always had these two, these two places where I've, I've been very interested in the action of words and, if you like, the, the language of action. Those two things have been um, uh, there with me um, really right from the start. Um, and I, 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 coming back to perhaps some of the... I, I, I thought I'd, I'd maybe talk a little bit about the, the sort of differences may, maybe that I feel about the performance and the art scene now and what was around for me in the late 60s and the 70s when uh, the urge to create performances um, was going on. I mean, one thing is, I don't think... I mean, some of the work of the 70s, early 70s was indeed political, with a very definite political agenda, but a lot of it, I think the artists felt that just doing performance was politics. You know, we were, we were, it was that same period of the notion of the dematerialization of the object. And so that was a very important aspect. But perhaps some of the work now might look apolitical, but it, it had a political thrust in its, in its very essence as, as we felt it. I was also thinking about this thing of, um, ha of discovering a reason. Um, uh, I think it's a fair phrase by the, the, the uh, co-founder of the Theatre of Mistakes, um, Fiona Templeton had this phrase, I do art to discover a reason, and I felt that a, a lot. Sometimes you don't even know what the reason is, even as, you're ma even, and even as you finish making the piece. I made a piece called Objects, in uh, Cardiff Art in Time, which was a festival that happened in the sort of uh, 90s, um, I, I got really fed up with trying to get people to come and perform and, uh, and rehearse and do... And I thought, oh, God, if only I could just... It's so I love performing with chairs and wardrobes and rugs because they're always there. They don't sort of have to go off and eat or see their boyfriends or anything like that. Wouldn't it be wonderful if I could have some performers who I just literally moved around like objects? And that idea really got to me, and I thought, well, okay, so I could have a, a rigid object and a floppy object, perhaps. As a, so I had one, one girl immaculately dressed um, in a, a, a white blouse and a, a sort of... Um, a, 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 a sheath skirt, uh, high heels, stockings, totally rigid, and I could literally lift her up by her waist and put her here. I tended to, in a functional sense, enjoy the idea of moving things through 90 degrees. And I had another girl who was totally floppy, and you didn't see her until, until um, a wardrobe door was opened and she flopped out of it. And I then hoisted her, picked her up, and put her on the table. And with each, uh, with each action that I made, I turned the whole uh, the scene around, the wardrobe, the table, the girls, through 90 degrees. And every time, I also had a suitcase which I opened, and every time I did this, I started um, dressing the floppy girl. Um, and so that by about, I don't know, 10 or 11 round, rounds, uh, I mean, first I, I, I put her pants on, then I put her bra on, then I put her stockings on. By, 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 by the end of the performance, she was completely dressed and, um, and she immediately became rigid. I then walked over to the other girl and began to unbutton her blouse and she collapsed. And... It was only maybe two years later, thinking back about that performance, I realised that my mother had died about maybe a month before I did that performance, and for about five years before that, because she had Alzheimer's, I had been dressing her every morning. I never made the connection. 
at the time, I never made the connection, and I think this is what I mean about find, discovering the reason. You may not even find the reason at the time of making it. And, 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 and um, that, that was sort of a, a interesting, uh, I, I suppose, has been intriguing to me, because it means that, for me, it makes art... Um, it gives me a purpose for making art, but I discover uh, these things. Um, uh, if there's some interesting things about the performance. I've still got some bro uh, little chat books that I made about the, about the performance of... Um, I've, I've brought four along. Anybody who wants one, do come and take one. About the performance in St. Petersburg. Again, here was this situation of inside and outside. As, uh, as I say, I'm quite interested in this notion that as much as we might take art out into the streets, we might bring the streets into the gallery. So I've worked with, um, in galleries with pigs. I've worked with uh, um, horses, ob obviously. So bringing something that is not no normally into the, in, into the gallery world seems to me an actually diametrically part of the same thing as with those wonderful shots we saw of the, um, the uh, uh, um, exhibition with, with a peacock looking at the art. I love those, those, those pieces and, 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 and so on. Um, th there were some interesting things too about um, uh, the police. Um, and health and safety and some of these issues which now become sort of very, very I inflated in a sense, but back in the 70s were, were, were not even considered. And, uh, and at around the, the, the 90s, uh, we're doing this performance in, in the Manege, but the, the central exhibition hall was... Um, was um, um, su supervised by the police. And so I said, well, I want to bring horses in there. And they said, absolutely not. And in a sense, I thought, well, they're sort of right, because there's marble floors. So I suggested that we would unshoe the horses so that the horses would have soft hooves. So we did this. We proposed it to the police. They immediately said, fine. So from there on, we were able to do it. So, oh, so that, 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 that produced this wonderful functional action of unshoeing a horse, which you know is sort of the, the wrong way around, really. Um, the, the other thing is that, that we said we will be going out outside, and that will involve nudity. And the police said, and this is as we say, in the '98, the police said. Um, well, you, you, will be, you will be arrested if you go outside n naked because a, a law came in in Russia two years ago forbidding nudity in public places. So all, all the way through the Soviet period, you could go anywhere with starkers. Nobody, no, nobody minded at all. It only came in after Glasnost, which was sort of interesting. So again, I was in this situation of thinking, how do I get around this? So I said, look, the manege, as you can see in the, in, the, in, the, in the movie, is sort of shaped like a temple. And actually, the, um, the front of the, the, the building, for, although it's technically outside, is inside the precinct, which traditionally was the temple precinct. And they bought it. So it's quite interesting how you get round these things, or how 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 it, 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 uh, it is possible for for people to see sort of the sort of slightly crazy logic. Of, uh, anyhow, that, as you saw, the police um, the, the police vehicle was sitting there, uh, and and they didn't do anything, and they seemed to be perfectly happy with that, with us doing doing the performance. Um, and, and and one last thing that's quite interesting about 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 the um, uh, um, that, that performance was most of the footage there's some footage by Emmanuel Wakely who was there who was a tremendous um, uh, she was doing performances for the same um, um, 
crowd who'd invited us out there and, 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 and we were working together on various pieces there. And so she had a camera. And, um, but other than that, at the end of the performance, she and I just went around asking, saying to everybody, did you take, did you take film? Did you, did you film it? Because this was the early days of people having their own sort of like cam cameras in, you know, camcorders and things. And everybody gave us their footage. And this was a lovely way of making a film because it was actually just sort of generated almost from the audience. So there were sort of um, those sorts of ideas um, uh, 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 around. Um, I'd like to also talk now a little bit about the, the, um, the um, street performance, um, which was done in, 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 uh, back in the early 70s. Um, and this, I think it's interesting, again, to just get the sense of the, of, the, of, the, of, the, of the sort of passions and dialectics of, of, of that time, I mean... Uh, I, I, I went to see the Cantor performance of the, of, of the dead class, and at the time I thought it was too theatrical. You know, I, not a view I would have now particularly, but in those days the, the, the idea of having, a, 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 of, of having such a rehearsed perform, performance seemed antithetical to the early days of perform, performance. Um, uh, later, the theatre of mistakes became highly rehearsed, so it, it wasn't sort of a, a view that, 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 that uh, remained. But we thought of ourselves, we considered what we did as sculpture. We considered what we were making was sculpture with our bodies, and, that, that, and, and, and we saw ourselves as separate from, from, from a theatre tradition. Um, that was something that was very important. We were very interested in, in systems and uh, systemic... Um, you know, this was the days of um, Philip Glass, Steve Reich, and systemic music, uh, serial, serial systemic music coming, being done, lots of repetition. And it, we decided that we would work on the street, which was actually the street I lived on, Asham Street in Kentish Town. It's a short, it's a not a very long street, or that side, but with uh, 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 butts onto Lady Margaret Road, it's about 30 houses long terrace uh, street. And we decided that we would rehearse for something like six to nine weeks on that street, and then invite, and invite anyone who was around to join us in the performance. And, and we ended up with quite a tribe. I think there must have been about 70 or 80 people involved in the, in, in, in the performance. Of course, no money at all. I mean, this was completely outside any, 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 um, any um, uh, encouragement from any powers that were. Um, and in order to do it, um, we thought, well, We'd better put a sort of brochure through the doors and letterboxes of the people on the street to say we intend to rehearse on the street for six weeks, nine weeks, or whatever it was. So we put, put the brochures through the door. Same time, we had this idea that we would, uh, we, we would open and shut the windows of, of my house and eventually the house opposite, um, and we would, we would listen to whatever was said on the street, and out of what was said we would devise canons and sustainers and uh, rep very repetitive um, uh, uh, Philip Glass sort of uh, um, uh, poems, but, 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 but with very uh, uh, tight structures. Well, one of the landlords there didn't like the idea at all. So he set up one of his tenants to irately shout at us, Wipe your asses with your bloody brochures. Well, which, which was I mean, heaven sent, of course. But <laughs> so, so for the next hour, we were going, wipe, wipe your, wipe your asses. And, and, and in various variations of this theme, very loudly, about ten people chorusing it. Up. And by the end of the hour and a half that we were, everybody, everybody in the street saw the joke. 
it, but, the change in people's attitude was extraordinary. And from there on, everybody helped us work on it. Everybody got very, very involved. By the time we did the performance, we ended up with... Um, everybody had taken the interior of their sitting room and put it out on the pavement. So you walk down everybody's sitting room, and we also had an interior decorated skip, which I think you can see in the tiny photos, which is all we got. And, and, so, and, and, and so everybody in the community got very involved. We were able to get into the, the houses the other side so we could open and shut the, the, the windows. If we shut the windows, everybody in the street fell down. And that was probably one of the first die-ins. I think the, I don't, I don't remember any of the, the sort of die-ins that then later happened in a more political message before, before, before that. Um, and um, so, so we were very interested in, in and it wasn't a die-in, it was just a sort of trigger. We were very involved in trigger systems, so if the windows came down, everybody fell down on the floor. If the windows went up, all the people stood up on the... And, I mean, the point, the idea was that some of your audience would be just passers-by, who would just sort of suddenly sort of feel a bit sort of surprised that everybody else had fallen down. And it was that sort of sense of maybe... Uh, the, the bizarre or the incongruous, which was much more than important then than any particular um, message. Um, uh, we, we had a Mikam Toran, who, 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 who now shows with, 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 with Anthony Reynolds, do, uh, moving, moving three dustbins systemically down the street, in, in, piling them on top of each other and then unpiling them very, very slowly. Most things happened so slowly, nobody could see them moving or extremely fast, but then you had to freeze for as long as it would have taken you to have done that action so slowly nobody could see you moving. We, we worked on a sort of recipe of um, performance exercises, which is expressed in a book called um, uh, Elements of Performance Art, which I think I've also got a copy of, which is a whole series of, of perform functional performance exercises we devised, um, which you could mix it to create a performance a bit like you might choose dishes in a Chinese, Chinese uh, me menu. Um, and the, the notion was very much about mutual art. This was a phrase we used, and we actually created a manifesto called the Manifesto of Mutual Art, which was this idea that we were all servants of mas and masters of each other, that anyone could, could create an exercise, and we would all try to do that performance exercise, provided the person who instigated that, that exercise was prepared to be in anybody else's exercise. And so it was a very much this, this, this notion of also getting away from the, 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 the idea of, of, um, of a, of a personality-based artist individual um, uh, take. That was quite related to Michael Craig Martin, with, with Michael Craig Martin's uh, um, antipathy towards gestural, gestural action in painting. So, so there were sort of aspects of, of uh, these were the, I'm trying to give you some sense of that atmosphere that was, that was creating the, the work. Um, and so we were using that sort of slow motion sense and um, uh, among other exercises, we had a slow motion car accident, which was very nice. Um, uh, uh, somebody drove a car, at m I think it was my, my wife's Mini, uh, uh, as so slowly nobody could see it moving, and, uh, and somebody was sort of run over by, by it and, and moved over the, um, over the roof of, of it. Um, uh, there was a there was a there was a slow motion ice cream van followed by about thirty slow motion children that was all scheduled to happen except that another ice cream van 
<laughs> turned into the street in the middle and had to back away. You know. So there was also a level of serendipity and chance and mistakes. We, it, we saw mistakes almost as a... I suppose we saw accident as relating to catastrophe and catastrophe relating to tragedy. And, and, that's, and, 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 and so a functional action which was, which was sort of um, impacted upon by, by some form of accident would be our drama, was our equivalent to drama. This was quite well res um, expressed in a piece called the three-act piece, where... The performers went through, did various actions, more or less improvised actions for about 20 minutes. And then, for the second 20 minutes, they had to reverse those actions. And for the third act, they had to repeat the actions they'd done in Act 1. But there was a um, set mover who brought on a table, two chairs, and a wardrobe during that. And he brought them on in Act 1, Object A, Object B, Object C, and he placed them down. But he took them out, Object A, Object B, Object C. So, the ob so, uh, so there was, a, there was a, an anomaly between where the objects, objects were, because they weren't, get, cut, get, they weren't reversing out of the piece in the same order as we were re reversing, if you get what I mean, which meant that people, some, and since people were moving backwards, sometimes they had to run backwards through tables that shouldn't have been there. And, and so that notion of, 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 if you like, tragedy as accident was, 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 was interesting to us. Um, and that sort of sense of... Um, of um, shared shared instigation of the work, the, the mutuality of the of the of the work, was also expressed in the management. I notice in the vitrine there's one um, sh there's one um, uh, um, sheet which shows you can see that different different uh, performance mem members had different jobs to get done in order to create the general admin uh, of the piece. Um, and so, so we were doing... Um, we were always working in, 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 in that sort of context. And perhaps the final piece that I will mention, is, since you mentioned Village Greens, um, is we did a piece on Hartley Whitney Village Green. We used to work mainly in my mother's farm. Uh, oh, I should mention my mother, just briefly. There's a, you can see her in one of those photos. My mother performed in the street in full hunting kit. And she, she sat there, and she, we, she, we wanted her to, to speak. We used to use a very a, a system called uh, we called additive additive um, uh, r r uh, expression where you would, s you would repeat, uh, you would, you'd, you'd, you'd say A and then you'd say A, B, and then you'd go A, B, C, A, B, C, D, and you could do this with words or sentences. And my mother was a vet, and she knew one hell of a lot of the names of, um, of animal diseases. So right the way, for an hour and a half, she sat there in her, in her bowler and hunting kit going um, shingles or whatever it was, staring, crazy chick disease, shingles, crazy chick, the chick disease, mastitis. And this went on all the way through the hour. Again, there wasn't an intent. There was only a discovery of what it might be about. In the, on the Village Green, we did a performance, it, it was a, the year, I can't remember, 74, 75, the year of a terrible drought in England. There was no rain at all for about three and a half months. And we devised a piece called Active Circles. This is perhaps the nearest we ever got to having an intention, where we formed, we, we, five of us formed a, a, a radius of a circle which could open out that so that it would become a a a a a a, um, a, 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 a diameter, as it were, and 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 every time it did, 
then that became the radius of a new and even bigger circle. And this performance could sometimes become small of a circle, could they also close up if we all linked up again and, 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 or expand even more. And the idea was we would do it till we were out of sound or sight of each other. This was pretty difficult on Hartley Whitney Village Green, but, uh, but, w but we did perform there for nine hours, and on the ninth hour, the water started coming out of the sky, and we got reported in all the local papers for having brought the rain, <laughs> which, we, which we were very proud of, of course. And just final point, we actually performed that. I, 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 I created that piece again about 1,000 miles into the, Amer into the Australian outback of several years later, where we did it on a dry lake. And on this dry lake, those five people did get to a point where you literally couldn't see the performer, they were that far away. And that was one of the wonderful moments in the outback. And this was a performance, that last point, this was a performance nobody saw. Only the performers who had come out there in the van were part of it. There was no audience, maybe the old wallaby. Thank you very much. Oh, any questions? I, um, perhaps, but I don't, I don't know. I, I didn't, it wasn't something that necessarily, you, you know, I, uh, it, I sort of would really probably say no, not particularly. Everybody retired back into their homes and it became a very typical anonymous London street, really. It may have changed things. You don't know how much people were giggling about that funny performance they'd done last year or whatever. You know. But you, you, that was the street you lived in. It was the street so I lived in. Get to know your neighbors on the street. Only, only functionally for that performance. We didn't really, it wasn't that, there was a very nice pub, the pineapple at the end of, 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 of Ashton Street, a very nice pub, and that became a pub that various uh, people, in fact, Jonathan Watkins, who now is an icon, was a regular in that pub at one point, and uh, Richard Wentworth had a, had a house there and had art created in his window, so it was a funny sort of arty street, I suppose. But I didn't really notice a huge sense of bonhomie and, uh, out afterwards. It, it was quite nice that the piece happened and then vanished. For the actual performance, did you advertise it outside of the street? Well, it got... Uh, people were... Uh, it, it, was, it was... I think we probably managed to get a little mention in Time Out. But, you know, it was difficult then. You didn't have the internet. You, you know, it was word of... It, there was quite a big audience in the end. But it's word of mouth and, you know, friends telling friends. And, uh, but there wasn't a sort of... There was no budget to, 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 to do any publicity. Some, one more question over there. Sorry? Well, I think a lot of art's like that. A lot. I mean, I write poetry. God, that's pretty invisible, you know. <laughs> I mean, you know, maybe, you know, you do a reading and maybe five people are there and they like it and, uh, you know. I mean, again, it's this question of, it's often asked in art schools and, you know, who are you doing this art for? And I'm a bit worried that sometimes in schools there's this notion of you must have a target audience, you must have, you must have a sense of who you're doing this for. We really, I mean, I'm, for me, I never did have that. I've always really been making this work because of my own intrigue in doing it. Okay. Um, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you.